Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and if you can see the uh, the various drill bits and little bits of metal all around my bench uh, you can probably guess what I've been up to and I have uh, removed the lock from this um, taxi phone and that, <laughs> that was tricky um, I'm usually fairly good at getting locks off things uh, but that type of lock where um, basically it's got a cylindrical key that goes round it and turns that was a mare. Um, usually with a lock, what well, I've done before now is just drill in front of the barrel, um, put a screwdriver in, whittled it a few times and they'll usually turn, you can get them open. Uh, this thing, I ended up breaking all the inside, the outside there out, thinking I can just pull the pins and be able to get the um, lock out that way. Uh, I got all but one of the pins out because I couldn't get that last pin out there was no way I was getting that to turn so I ended up trying to drill through the centre of it and push it out that way that didn't work in the end I had to drill all the way around it and get a screwdriver and belt it one pop that bit out and I still couldn't get the flaming um, lock open so I had to go back in on that bit and Basically, with brute force, I, I drilled a few more holes down the side of it so I could get a screwdriver in, like a slot there, and just levered the thing out, and eventually it did break, and I did manage to get it out. So, um, yeah, that that was not easy. That was quite hard to um, to get in this thing, but... And then, even with the lock out, it still didn't open immediately, because there's, there's actually a lock mechanism inside it. But um, yeah, I managed to, I said, get that, get that out of there, and then fiddle about with sticking my finger inside it, and um, eventually managed to get it to unlock. So, was I correct? Is this exactly what I thought it was? And um, let's have a look inside. Uh, basically, yes. Um, what we've got here? Let me just take that piece of metal off because. I, think, I don't think it's going to drop off now, that fell off the first time I opened the um, cabinet. But um, essentially what we've got here is a giant mobile phone. Um, let me get you zoomed in on the main board. And you can see what we've got down here. So obviously we've got the display and the keypad up there. But essentially this is it. And um, what we've got, we flick and lift that up. I've got an O2 SIM card. Now it's one of the old, older style SIM cards. If you look at the size of it compared with um, a modern SIM, like a, a micro SIM. But I should be able to get. I think, in fact, somewhere I've got one. Um, is an adapter that goes from this size down to the more modern um, size of SIM card. I actually, because this thing's O2, um, I've got a spare O2 SIM um, in a spare mobile phone that I just keep for emergencies, pay-as-you-go one. So we could actually see if we could get this thing um, working as a mobile phone. Because um, really, that should be all that I need is um, to put a working pay-as-you-go SIM in there and it should it should theoretically be able to actually um, connect to um, connect to a cellular network what we will do actually because I haven't tried it what I have noticed when I first got um, in here is one thing the display there was it's just been disconnected and the other thing let me get you uh, oops zoomed out a little bit Pull it round this way so you can see a little bit better. That's the back of the keypad there, and there should be, um, like I said, that was disconnected. And I think that I'm guessing I haven't tried it yet, but um, I'm guessing that plugs on there for the display. And I think there should be a cable that goes from that spot there up to the actual keypad to get the keypad to work. Um, I don't know why they've removed it rather than just disconnected, but I guess that was done so no one could mess with the actual keypad. And this thing was set up, so you lifted the receiver and it just dialed the number. Um, they dialed the number that it uh, was 
pre-programmed to dial, which obviously would be the um, taxi rank. But there's no reason why it should have to be used like that. Um, we should be able to use this thing just as a standard mobile phone. So, I mean, it's got a speaker in it. Um, obviously, you've got the head, you've got the um, handset for um, hearing and speaking. So I, I don't think there should be any reason why it won't work like that. But what I'll have to do is make up... Um, you can actually see down there there's little bits of wire on... That's not just a, a blind connector that's never been used. There are actually some little bits of wire and bits of solder on it. So there used to be either a connector or I think more likely a ribbon cable like that on there that actually did go up to that. So. Before we can really go much further with this thing, I will have to make something up um, to replace that, or otherwise we're not going to be able to actually use the keypad as in dial a number or um, access any of the um, menus or anything like that that this thing might have. I really don't know quite how um, how advanced the mobile actual phone part of this will be, what, what it'll be able to do. Um, you're not going to be able to text on it or anything like that. It will just be like a really basic um, call-in style mobile phone. Another thing that I found... Well, oh, that's the other thing I've got to point out. How dodgy is the power on this thing? Um, basically what we've got is we've got a mains, a mains lead coming in with a socket on it. Coming up to this board here, now if I just remove this board, this is... I've never ever seen anything like this in a commercial product before. Let's find a, a suitable screwdriver, that might do it. Take these two screws out. Right, there we go. So, basically we've got a wall wart style power adapter. We've got the mains input there, so we've got an earth. So we have got an earth, and it is all earthed up quite nicely, I'll say that. Hot snot over them so they can't be touched, but this, <laughs> just look at this, what they've done. We've turned this thing over. Essentially what we've got, we've got a US style wall wart power supply there with the US style pins pushed through the circuit board and just soldered to the circuit board. So, I mean, I'm guessing that thing is uh, designed to work uh, from, you know, probably 100 volts up to 250 volts. It's a switching power supply um, producing... 4.6 volts at 1 amp, um, compa um, according to that. But yeah, they've literally used a US style wall wipe there and just soldered the pins to the PCB and then they've run, obviously run the mains in that way. It's Yeah, it'll work. Um, I don't think I've ever, ever come across anything quite that... Um, quite that dodgy before. I think we've got a... I don't know if that's a phone, um, an RJ11 or an RJ45 um, connection there as well. On that main, um, on that main circuit board. What I think we'll probably do. I'm not doing a long video on this or anything today. It's I'm literally just doing this because I've just finished um, getting that uh, lock out of it. I was not expecting something that quite that substantial uh, for this but then it's now I'm in it I suddenly realized why uh, why that was so substantial and it's not that they were worried about anyone breaking in this thing per se um, I've just realized what this was originally or at least what the casting is originally um, and that's actually a payphone this have you noticed you've got a slot down there uh, it just one, just above where, uh, just below where it says um, taxiphone.co.uk. There, 
that's a slot for a phone card. And um, I think what these are is the repurposed um, pay phones that use the, um, the like the UK um, phone cards. Because I mean I don't think they use them anymore. But back in the day, I certainly remember back in the nineties um, when I was a kid. Well, when I was a teenager, um, rather than having money for your um, phone, you could buy a phone card. You know, start, I think they started at two pounds up to like ten pounds, and you go up to one of these phones, a card phone, and you put your card in there, and it give you so much credit, so many minutes, and you could use your pay phone, take your card out, put it back in your wallet, and you weren't carrying a big pile of change around with you, um, and. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what these are. Um, they've just been repurposed for this taxiphone use. So if we look inside, there's actually, you can see there where it's been blanked off where the um, card reader would have been if it had actually been a, um, a card payphone. And it also kind of gives you an idea of why this thing is so... This is all die cast um, aluminium, the whole case of it. It's got this ridiculously powerful, strong lock mechanism in it. Because obviously they didn't want people, these type of things generally got vandalised. And this cabinet has been made, it is pretty much um, vandal proof. And if I just, I have to use my finger obviously because there's no lock mechanism on it anymore. But if I lock that down, you know. Literally, if it had the lock in there, without that key, or spending the probably best part of an hour that it took me to actually get inside this thing, you you weren't breaking in one of these things in five ten minutes. You it was going to take you a number of tools and quite a bit of time to break into one. Plus, I mean, with it being a card phone, unless you was going to be doing something you know electronic in there to hack the phone somehow, perhaps to get a free phone calls or something. Um, there isn't really all that much point in getting in one. It's not as though it's a, a coin phone, you know, where you put your money in. I don't. I think they were slightly different, actually. Ones used like the BT ones, used for card phones. But yeah, we um, we actually now know what we've got inside here, and it is as I thought. It is basically just a mobile phone. What I'll do is the final thing. I'll power it up. Obviously, we're not going to be able to. Uh, do anything with the keypad until I can figure out um, make a cable up for that keypad and can actually see if the keypad works and I'll find an adapter and we'll actually see if it's going to work as a mobile phone but what we can do if I get it in the right light is we'll power it up and um, you can have a look at the uh, look at the, dis the display let me get that about there and hopefully I right, plug this in Ah, there we go. It is actually get you in a little bit like that. Right, is that focusing so you can see it? It is actually getting a, a mobile phone signal. It's coming up limited service there. Um, obviously, there's there's no battery on it or anything, so the date's wrong. But we've got the first of the first 2012 as a date on there. The, a time on it as well. It appears to be trying to charge a battery which is non-existent so I think I did spot on the uh, main thing inside. Yeah there is a um, provision oops that's that bit that keeps dropping out. Uh, there is provision there for a battery. What that switch there does. So I just switch it off. I don't know what that switch there is meant for. There's a little switch inside. But, yeah, I say it does actually seem to power up. It is doing something. I'm wondering actually if, it, well, if I was to put a battery in it, it could be even a, like a portable kind of thing. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. It's like, it was just a super quick little um, look. I finally managed to, managed to drill that flaming lock out and get in there. And yes, it is what I thought it was. It is basically a glorified mobile phone. We'll do a, another video on this probably. I'll have to dig out the bits I need to actually make that cable up. And I'll see if I can find a SIM adapter. And I know I've got some old 2 pay as you go SIMs. And we'll actually see if we can get this thing to dial out and actually ring into it if possible.
So anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, look at this um, interesting piece of junk I got for three. So I'll say uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.